Hello students, welcome to Daras Online. So we continue with our revision in commerce subject. My name is Ntinga Kengera, a commerce teacher. So today we have a revision on the topic uh, imported trade. Our topic is imported trade. Imported trade. And our subtopics, our subtopics will be uh, import procedures, import procedures, and documentation documentation in Tanzania another subtopic will be uh, international international uh, commercial Commercial terms. Uh, Inco terms. So today we cover the, the following two subtopics in the topic uh, imported trade. So imported trade is the buying from other countries. A country may need to buy from other countries as a country cannot be self-sufficient. A country need to buy from other countries because countries differ in terms of technology, in terms of resources, and in terms of skills. And therefore, a country need to buy from other countries. So, when importers need to buy from other countries, they can buy on their own, or they can use middlemen. So, buying by themselves is direct importation, and when they use a middlemen, this is indirect importation. You need to follow some procedures. So there are some procedures which must be followed in importation or in buying from other countries. Now, so today we have a revision on those procedures. So the following are the procedures. Number one is trade inquiry. Now, trade inquiry. This is a written uh, request which is written by an importer to the exporter. So under this one, the importer needs to know about the price of goods, terms and conditions, as well as method of delivery and other issues. So before an importer buy from those countries or from other countries, he has to find out and to know about the prices of those goods he or she needs to import. But also she has to know or he has to know about the terms and conditions of sale. But also an importer should understand about the methods of payments as well as the method of delivery of those goods. So that's why an importer should write a request to an exporter to understand those uh, terms and conditions, prices of those goods, 
but also different ways in which uh, goods will be delivered in the country. So this is very important procedure or step to be followed by our uh, importers. Another procedure or uh, step is procurement of import license. An importer must an importer must find out or an importer should get an import license. An importer will not be allowed to import goods in the country without having an import license. And therefore, the government has put this condition that in order to import goods in the country, importers must get an import license. Now, this is the way how the government can control importation from other countries. So the government do this purposely in order to protect local industries, but, uh, but also in order to control foreign currents. So only the goods which are allowed to come in the country are those goods where the government, through the means of uh, industry and the trade, will provide the license. So the license can be either general license or specific license. And a general license here means that when you are given such a license, it means an importer is allowed to import goods from any country. But when you are given a specific license, it means you will be allowed to uh, import goods from specific countries. Yeah. Another, another procedure is obtaining foreign currency. Now, in international trade, when you're buying from other countries, you need to obtain or to have a foreign currency. You need to have a currency of a country you are importing from. And therefore, an importer should find to get these foreign currency of the respective country he is uh, importing. And therefore, he may find these from uh, different banks which are dealing with these uh, foreign currents. But all in all, foreign currents are controlled by central bank in the country. So an importer must get foreign currents of, an, a, of a country he or she is importing. Another procedure is placing of an order. An importer should uh, place an order after being satisfied with the uh, goods, prices, and value of those goods, he, uh, he is uh, planning uh, to, to, to import, and therefore he should now place an order. So an importer will place an order uh, basing on the quantity, quality, but also on the methods of uh, falling. So that order which an importer is placing will be uh, having those uh, description. But an international order is called an index. Therefore, an index can be either uh, open index or closed index, or sometimes it can be confirmatory uh, index. An open index is an index or an order in which all the details are left to an agent who is in exporting country. So here an importer uh, does not give any description about the goods. But when you come to close index, here an importer give all description about the goods he or she needs to import. But confirmatory index is a type of an index which is subject to confirmation from an agent who is in exporting country. Another procedure is 
dispatching a letter of credit. So a letter of credit is demanded by an exporter. Now this letter of credit gives a credit worthness of an importer. So an exporter needs to know credit worthness of an importer because in international trade, uh, an importer may be in a certain country. Let's say an importer is in Tanzania. While an exporter is in Japan. And therefore, an exporter needs to be sure with the payments of uh, the goods he is exporting. And that's why an exporter will ask an importer to open a letter of credit through his bank. And therefore, an importer should approach his or her bank to open a letter of credit. And then, if the bank is satisfied with an importer, then the bank will open a letter of credit. And this letter of credit will be sent to the country of an exporter through the bank of an exporter. And therefore, after being notified by the bank that the letter of credit has been sent, then an, import, an exporter will be confident on uh, dispatching or sending goods to an importer. So letter of credit can be either documentary letter of credit, or can be clean letter of credit, or can be revocable letter of credit, but sometimes it can be irrevocable letter of credit. And a documental letter of credit is a letter of credit which are demanded the payment will be done only after the necessary document be sent to an importer. But clean letter of credit is a letter of credit which does not require any document to be attached. While a revocable letter of credit is a type of letter of credit whereby uh, an Im importer's bank can withdraw uh, or can make some changes without notifying uh, an exporter. But irrevocable letter of credit is the type of letter of credit which uh, an, Im an importer's bank cannot withdraw or cannot make any changes without the consent of an exporter. But in most cases, the letter of credit which is used in most cases is irrevocable letter of credit. Another procedure is obtaining necessary documents. So after an exporter being satisfied and now is ready to send the goods to importer's country, an exporter will send some documents. Now the first document to be sent is an advice note. Now this advice note is a document which shows which give the detail of the goods which uh, will be sent or which are sent by an exporter. But also this document uh, explain or give some prediction uh, when, an, when an exporter expects those goods to reach the port of destination. With this document after being sent, then an exporter will draw a bill of exchange. A bill of exchange being a document which demands an importer to pay the amount due uh, depending on the goods which have been exported. So bill of exchange is written but also will be attached with other documents like a bill of lading, insurance policy, but also certificate of origin. And that's why this is called documental bill, being a bill of exchange with, which is attached with some other documents. Therefore, a documental bill or bill of exchange can be, now payments can either be a DP, which means 
document against payment. And at this one, the documents will be given to an importer uh, when he gives payment or when she gives payment. So no payments, no documents which will be given. But uh, DA document against acceptance, this is when the payments will be on acceptance. Means after some days, for example, it can be a bill of exchange can be drawn uh, for uh, 30 days. And this one gives an important time uh, for payment. But when is document against payment, you, when you, uh, those documents will be given after payment, when payments are done. But this DA or document against acceptance, then uh, once you accept a bill of exchange, you are given the documents and payments will be done when that uh, bill of exchange are mature. So that uh, documents will be uh, will remain to the bank and after that time, then the bank will collect that money uh, from an importer. So another uh, procedure is customs formalities and the clearing of goods. Once goods have reached the port of destination, then an importer needs now to uh, clear those goods from the port. And now the importer should uh, clear those uh, custom duties. He has to pay those uh, duties at the port, but also he needs to follow some procedures which are needed at the port of destination. destination. Now under that one, he has to fill the document known as bill of entry, uh, where bill of entry is filled at the port, showing all the goods which have been imported and the status those goods have when they reach the port of destination. But when in an importer has no money to take the goods at, the, at that particular time, he can uh, put those goods in bonded warehouse, waiting for the time when it'll be okay, when it'll be having money, then he can take those goods. So when goods are kept in a bonded warehouse, then he'll be paying some uh, charges. So the last step or the last procedure is making the payments. Now an importer has now to make payments to an exporter. So it depends with the agreement or terms and conditions. Now if our payments or if the agreements were for uh, payment against uh, documents against payments, then an importer should pay immediately when goods reach the country. But when the uh, agreement were uh, payment against the uh, acceptance, then payments will be done after a bill of exchange mature. Now, these are the procedures of importing goods from other countries. So this is how goods are imported. So when an importer needs to import goods from other countries, he or she has to follow these procedures. So my dear students, hope now you are clear with this explanation or with these procedures. But sometimes an exporter may prepare a letter of hypothecation. Now this is prepared in order to solve a problem in case an importer has failed to pay for the goods or when an importer failed to honor a bill of exchange. A letter of hypothecation is a letter written by an exporter to the bank. Now this letter authorizes the bank to sell the goods in case an importer has failed to pay the amount due. So sometimes it may happen that the bank has discounted a bill of exchange. And therefore, 
uh, a bank is waiting for that uh, money which will be paid by an importer. So an exporter gives the bank this letter of application which gives the bank authority to sell the goods in case an importer have failed to pay the amount due. Now the bank will find a customer to buy those goods in case the importer failed to pay the amount. And therefore the bank will supervise each and everything on the selling of those goods. And when the, uh, the amount from those sales exceeds the amount which the bank uh, gave to an exporter, then those uh, amount which remain will be sent to, to the exporter. But when the amount the bank sold those goods will be less than the amount the bank gave to an uh, exporter, then an exporter will send some money to cover the gap. So my dear students, a question of interest here can be asked in this way. A Mr. Akil has been a local trader for some years and now he is in need to operate internationally. Unfortunately, he is not aware on how goods are imported from other countries. Now, as an expert in commerce, assist this trader on the basic procedures to be followed. So the question here uh, needs you to help Mr. Akil, who has been uh, operating local, and now he wants to operate internationally. But unfortunately, Mr. Akil is not aware with the importing procedures. Now the question needs you uh, to help such a person. So the help you can give show those procedures we have revised on. So the procedures are those ones. The first one, tell Mr. Kill to fund the license for importing, but also Mr. Kill has to find out the market condition to know different prices in different countries and other issues are concerning a market and other procedures. So help Mr. Kill by showing him those procedures. So after knowing the procedures in importation, now let's have a look on different ways in which payments can be done in international trade. The last procedure I have, uh, we have uh, seen there was payment. Now how payments are done in international uh, trade or in importation? Now payment method in international trade. Number one is cash in advance or cash with order. Now this is the way when... Uh, when you place an order, you should send your amount for those goods. Now this you pay before you receive goods. Sometimes in international trade, exporters may need you to pay first in order uh, an exporter to send goods uh, in your country. So this way is safe to exporters is less risk to exporters, but it has more risk to importers. Because uh, you send your money first, once you place an order, that order should go with your money. And this one is more risk to uh, importers, but is less risk to exporters, because exporters receive money first and then they send good to you. Now this can be done uh, through uh, payment can be done through uh, fax or other uh, electronic ways of payment. Another method, another method is documental credit or letter of credit. Now this is the way in which payment can be done. Now documental uh, credit or letter of credit. Now, as I've said before, in this way, 
An exporter demands an importer to open a letter of credit. And then the letter of importer, the, the, the bank of an importer will open a letter of credit. So payments will be uh, done through these two banks. Now a bank of importer, importer's bank, will prepare that letter of credit and the payment will be done through this bank and then this uh, bank of an importer will send this money to the bank to the bank of an exporter so this is another way uh, where uh, payments can be done another way is documental bill under this one an exporter write a bill of exchange now this bill of exchange will be attached with uh, some documents and then uh, an importer has to accept that bill of exchange and then arrange for payments. Now sometimes documents can be against the payments that once you get, an exporter can send those documents to the bank which is in importing country. And then those documents will be given to an importer Porter once he gives payments, but also uh, documents against acceptance are uh, once you accept the bill of exchange being an importer, and then on that bill of exchange, the date of payment is written, and therefore you have to pay basing on the date which is written on that bill of exchange. Another way of payment is bank draft. Now, the bank draft here is a check which is drawn by uh, whereby an exporter instructs his bank to, uh, to pay uh, exporter's bank through uh, a check which is drawn by importer bank. So this is the way where two banks communicate, uh, exporter's bank writing a check which will be uh, sent to the bank of exporter. And the last method is bill of exchange. Now this is a bill of exchange whereby uh, being an order uh, written by an exporter for payments but this one has got no any document which is attached with the document. So it's just uh, a written order from an exporter to the importer without having any document. The main difference between documental bill and the bill of exchange is that documental bill is attached with some documents such as a bill of reading or doc, uh, document of title. But this bill of exchange is a bill which is not attached with, with any other document. So these are the ways in which payments can be uh, done in international trade. All oh, these are the ways in which an importer can pay an exporter. So a question uh, on this part can be asked in this way. Analyze different methods of payments available to importers. Now what are different ways? So this one you have to analyze. Analyze means in each method, you may uh, give explanation. For example, uh, in cash, in the first method, cash in advance. We said this one is more risk to an importer, but is less risk to an exporter. So you analyze in that scenario. You try to show uh, the level of risk between uh, importer and exporter. Who has more risk than the other? So under this one, an importer has more risk than an exporter. So you analyze uh, those each method by trying to explain. For example, when you come to documental credit or letter of credit, uh, this one, an importer has less risk, but also exporter has less risk because under this letter of credit, an exporter is confident that he will be paid his or her money 
because uh, the bank of an importer has written a letter of credit in which uh, show that the bank has committed that the money will be paid. So all these ways you have to analyze on each method. You show the level of risk to those uh, importers and exporters. Or you show the advantage on each method to exporter and to an importer. So that is how that question can be answered. Okay, another part to revise in this lesson is uh, pre-shipment pre inspection. Now, pre-shipment inspection is inspection which is done in exporting country. Uh, this is uh, required by the uh, importing country. So importing country may demand this for some reasons. Now the main uh, parts which are inspected are a uh, value of goods, uh, the value, uh, the quantity, but also uh, to see the price but also to see if the goods have been uh, insured, insurance. So these are the main uh, parts in which uh, pre-shipment inspection can be done. Now the country or the importing country may need to know the value of those goods which are imported in the country or the quantity of those goods which are imported in the country, but also to know the price of those goods if is the real price of those goods. And therefore, the uh, importing government, the importing country uh, may uh, demand this in order to know uh, these uh, uh, things. So my dear students, uh, pre-shipment inspection is very, very important to the country due to the following uh, reasons or significance. Number one is, our uh, Ensuring that goods imported are of required quality. So pre-shipment is done in order country to be confident that those goods which are imported are of required quality. Number two is ensuring that the foreign currency is spent well. So a country should make sure that those goods which are coming in the country and the foreign currency which is spent on those goods, uh, the currency is spent in a good way, but also the price which is paid so that you pay the exact amount uh, which is required to be paid and therefore uh, making sure that the foreign currency are spent uh, well. Number three is protecting consumer against the substandard goods. Now, the government may require pre-shipment inspection in order to make sure that those goods which are coming in the country are of good standard in order to protect consumers or to protect uh, people in the country not consuming goods of low standard. Number three is ensuring that price charged by exporters reflect the true value of the goods. Yes, goods which are coming in the country, uh, their prices should reflect the true value of those goods. And that's why the government may need those goods to be inspected in those various areas such as uh, price. But also, uh, pre-shipment inspection help to control the importation of harmful and dangerous products. Uh, sometimes goods may come the country which are harmful to the people or which are dangerous and therefore pre-shipment inspection is done in order to control those harmful and dangerous goods to come in the country but also it ensures that goods are full insured pre-shipment inspection also needs to know if those goods have been insured now before those goods are shipped uh, they must be full insured. Then a uh, pre-shipment inspection uh, ensure that those goods have been insured.
to avoid uh, big losses which can happen if those goods have not been uh, insured. Another one is it is really the chance of an importer to avoid paying cash and duty on the full value of product being imported. Because after inspection, the value of goods will be known. And therefore, the government will be aware with those goods which are coming in the country. And therefore, importers have no chance of uh, escaping or avoiding from paying the real amount of custom duty. And therefore, the government will be safe or will get what is supposed to get from custom uh, duty. So these are the significance of pre-shipment inspection. So the government uh, of importing country uh, require these for these advantages or significances. So the government always, or sometimes, not always, sometimes may require these for these purpose. So after this, you can have a question on this part. Now the question is, Elaborate the significance of pre-shipment inspection to the importing country. Now, what are these significance? We have explained or have explained this significance. So, a simple question like this will be answered in that way. So, you need to understand what does it mean by pre-shipment inspection. And then, elaborate all those significance which we have revised uh, this time around. So after that, let's have a look on uh, international commercial terms. Now, international commercial terms or INCO terms, yeah, this is price quotation, price uh, quotation, uh, terms and conditions in international uh, transaction. transaction so traders being importers and exporters should agree on different uh, price quotation but also they should agree on different terms and condition when an importer needs to import from other countries they have to agree on the prices they will pay. And what other conditions? Now, who will transport those goods? Will be an importer or an exporter? Who will pay the charges for loading? Who will pay carriage charges? So those are issues to be agreed before uh, you buy those goods from other countries. So international uh, commercial terms... As I've said, these are different price quotation terms and the condition in international transaction. So you must agree before so that you avoid some contradiction between a buyer and a seller. So what are the importance of international uh, commercial terms? Now, the main uh, importance of this, number one, is it have to identify the duties and obligation of each part. So, under this one, each part being an importer and exporter, know uh, the duties and obligation. So, an importer will know his or her duties and obligation, but also an exporter will know his duties and obligation. But also, they indicate the lines of demarcation of duties and obligation between an exporter and an importer. 
So this one helped to draw a line of demarcation. Now this is an exporter. And this is an importer. So uh, international commercial terms uh, indicate a line of demarcation that an exporter should do this, this, and this one. While an importer should do this, this, and this one. So it shows a line or it indicates the line of demarcation. These uh, duties are supposed to be done with an exporter. But these duties are supposed to be done by an importer. So it shows or it indicates a line of demarcation. But also, uh, they are governing the method and the responsibility as well as accountability in affecting payment of costs to be incurred. So it will be known that an exporter should pay the following. The following. Such as maybe he can pay carriage charges. He can pay uh, or she can pay uh, uh, loading charges. Or an importer should pay either the carriage charges, if not an exporter, carriage charges. Or an importer should pay the insurance, insurance. Or an importer has to pay the uh, unloading charges or warehousing charges. So it shows. Who has to pay what? Exporter should pay this and importer should pay this. So once you agree on this, then there won't be any problem. So let's have a look on some of the inco terms. Let's have a look on the sum of uh, inco terms. So number one is uh, fall or free on railway. Now, what does it mean? Now, fall or free on railway. Now, this means that the price you are paying as an importer will cover all the costs of the a point where goods reach in railway station in exporting country. So an exporter should incur all those costs from the factory to the railway station. Now from there, an importer should incur other costs, like uh, costs of taking those goods to the port and cost of loading uh, transportation costs and other costs. So when you come to FAS, now this is a free along alongside ship. Now under this one, an exporter should incur those costs till goods reach the along the uh, side ship it means at the port so it means the price an importer pays cover all costs including uh, this cost of uh, transporting the goods from the factory to the uh, port so it means the price will cover all these costs taking the goods from the factory to the port but in the country of exporter. Now, FOB here, we mean that free on board. So this one means that the price an importer pays cover all the costs till the goods are packed in the ship. It means an exporter has to do all the issues from uh, taking the goods from the factory to the point where goods are loaded in the ship. 
And then an importer will start there. The costs have been covered by an exporter till the goods have been loaded in the ship. Now from there, an importer will start to incur other costs. When you come to C and F, C and F, now this one means cost and freight. Now it means the exporter has to cover all expenses, including carriage charges, loading charges, and other charges except, except insurance. So and the price which was paid cover all those costs. So it's the duty of an exporter to cover the carriage costs, loading costs, and the freight costs, except insurance. But when you come to CIF, now this one, it means an exporter should cover all the costs including uh, costs, then uh, insurance, and uh, freight. So under this one, it means uh, an exporter should cover all the costs, carriage costs, loading costs, but also recover the insurance and the freight charges. So it means uh, an importer will start paying after goods reach the port of destination. And now the importer should incur those other costs once goods are rigged in the port of destination. So after this, there are other, other inco terms, but for this uh, revision, we cover this, and then as a student, I'll give you an assignment to work on other, on other uh, inco terms. Now let's have a question which will help us to understand this concept clearly. Now the question is, J&J &J Enterprises of Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, imported 200 personal computers from Japan, and the costs were as follows. The ex-factory cost was 500,000 per computer. The cost of delivery to docks of harbor in Japan was 600,000. And the loading expenses at docks were 10% of first price. The computer were insured at 10% of FOB. Freight charges up to the Islam port were uh, 5 million. Now the question is, calculate the following, first price, for price, C and F price, and CIF price. So you have been given a question of that uh, nature, that J and J enterprises who are in Dal Islam, which is found in Tanzania, imported 200 personal computers. And each computer uh, costs 500. And this 500,000 is a cost, ex factory cost. It means it's a cost from the factory. But the cost of the river to docks of harbor in Japan is 600,000. Now the question uh, needs you to find First price, now first price, as I've said before, first it means free alongside ship. It means this price will cover even the transporting those goods from the factory to the dock of harbor in Japan. So now here I have to calculate 
Now the question says, uh, number of computers were 200. Number of computers Two hundred. Now each computer costs five hundred thousand. Now, in order to get a cost of this computer, you have to multiply five thousand five hundred thousand times two hundred. Now, this is simple mathematics. Now, here you get. 100 million. Now this is the cost of computer from the factory. But first mean the price include the cost of transporting those goods to the dock. And the cost is the cost of transporting those goods or deliver those goods to the dock is 600. So here you have to add with 600. And therefore, first price would be 600. Now this is first price. You have to uh, multiply you take the cost of each computer, which is 500, number of computers 200, and then you multiply, you get uh, 100 million. But also this price uh, includes the uh, cost of delivering those goods to the port. Now the cost is 600, so you add. So first price is 100 million 600 million. Uh, uh, 600,000. So this is first price. Hope everybody is okay with this calculation. Number two is, after getting this figure, you need to make sure this figure is somewhere because you are going to use it. So four price. Now under four price here, four. It means the price here includes the costs of loading in the ship. So in short, you take a uh, first price you add uh, with a uh, cost of loading costs. Loading uh, costs. So under this one, you have first already. But the question says, the loading expenses at dock were 10% of first price. So you should calculate 10% of first price. Now you have first price here. First is equal to 100. A million six hundred thousand. You multiply by ten percent. So here, the answer will be. Now this is a uh, ten percent of fuss. So the question was. Uh, uh, the explanation here was the loading expenses at dock were ten percent of fast price. Now, this is not the answer. This is just 10% of first. Now, you have to add. Now, this is first price. And therefore, you have to take that first price. You add with the loading cost, which is. Now, this is the loading cost. Loading cost, which is 10,060,000. So take 100 million 600,000 you add by 10 million uh, 60,000 
Now, after adding this one, then now you have FOB. Free on board price will be this one of 200 computers. So when you add this one, you get this figure. When add, FOB will be Now this will be our full price. So as you can see here, you have first price of that one, uh, 106,000. Uh, 600, and full price increases, as you can see. Full price will increase, will be greater than our first price. Now another equal terms you have to calculate is uh, C and F price. So this is very simple. Under this one, uh, C, uh, C and, and F price. Now it means you include all the costs, like those costs of carriage, loading, so it's very simple, just take the full price, you add, you add the freight charges. Now the issue is, the loading expenses at dock were 10% and the computer were insured that amount, but freight charges up to Dar es Salaam port were 5 uh million. So it's very simple. Just take a four, then you add the freight charges, which is a five uh, million. Now we have four, which is Plus five million so the other simple here is one now this is for uh, C and F price. Now C and F price will be this one. So C, I, F, here it means you have to add the uh, insurance cost, which is the computer were insured at 10% of FOB. So calculate 10% of FOB, then you get the uh, insurance uh, costs. So this one will be your homework to calculate C, I, F. It's very simple. Just find... 10% of FOB, then you add with this figure we have obtained here. So my dear students, let me give you an exercise which you will uh, try to do so that you can be uh, more familiar with this uh, concept. So an exercise for you is explain the following international commercial terms or INCO terms C I F I, C I F and E, C I F and C, C I F F O and Franco. So have a revision on those. Try to work on those uh, inco terms, and I'm sure you'll be much comfortable when you practice on this one. Now this calculation needs uh, more practice. Make sure uh, you don't leave this. Try to e exercise or to practice on your own. Then you'll be very, very comfortable with this topic. Hope you have enjoyed this lesson. See you next time.